Dr. Rajan, we'll start with our next session. Yeah. Dr. Ankaj have joined Hello? us. Joined us? Yeah. Okay. So, but dear participants, we'll be having today one more session on precision farming. So today we will be witnessing one unique concept of precision farming that uses various technologies to improve the management strategies and farmers' performance pertaining to the dairy. So uh, through this uh, precision dairy farming, it, though it is in infancy stage, the new uh, precision dairy farming technologies are being introduced in the market. So with this exciting potential, we are here with Dr. Ankaj Thakur. On behalf of the team, Sahas, I heartily welcome you to this training program, sir. Thank you, thank you. Dr. An Ankaj Thakur, who is working as an assistant professor, Department of Livestock Farm Complex, DGCN Palambur. He is an expertise in animal welfare, animal behavior, dairy farming, livestock production, and management. I would uh, now like to invite Dr. Ankaj Thakur to give up a brief talk on precision dairy farming. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I want to thank you organizers for being, giving me this opportunity. Is the screen visible to all? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, so uh, the topic of uh, today's discussion is uh, precision dairy farming. So uh, today I will talk in detail about the precision dairy farming. Uh, as you all know that India is the uh, leading uh, producer of uh, milk in the world. Uh, if you talk about the total milk production, but if we talk about in cow milk production, then USA is the number one leading producer. So uh, with this uh, milk production, uh, the India is contributing almost one fourth of the total milk production. That, uh, for example, that if we consider that there, there is a hundred liter of milk production in the world, then twenty five liter of it is contributed only by the India. So uh, the future of this uh, dairy sector is very bright in the uh, coming years. So first of all, I want to talk about the uh, precision dairy farming. So it, it is defined as the use of information uh, technologies for assessment of uh, the uh, fine scale uh, animal uh, technologies. So using the technology basically uh, for, for, the, for the optimizing uh, your decisions, management decisions is basically uh, called as precision dairy farming. Let's wait. So precision dairy farm technologies provide tremendous opportunities for improvement uh, in individual and management decision on dairy farms. And uh, this uh, help in enhancing the cow comfort and uh, improving the overall health and which also lower the cost of animal care and treatment. And this can increase the animal longevity and also boost the uh, animal milk yield. So what are the current demands of the dairy? Uh, the current demands of dairy is uh, animal well-being, consumer demands, uh, and environment factors are there, and labor and economics. Uh, so animal well-being uh, well is also very much uh, now consumer concern because uh, what the consumers are now more concerned is what they are eating, they are more concerned now. For example, uh, we are having a milk. So they want to know that from where their milk is coming, how the animal are being raised uh, and from which dairy farm is, uh, from which dairy farm is their animal, are, uh, they are, the milk is coming. Because uh, if the welfare of the animals is poor in the farm, the products raised by them may have the antibiotic residues, pesticide residues, which are of concern to the human health. So now the consumers are growing more concerned towards uh, from where from where their product is coming, and also the environmental concern are uh, there because uh, due to the global warming, the uh, the, the the all are uh, focusing more toward the climate smart uh, livestock farming. And due to the enhancing labor cost and economics, uh, the dairy industry is also facing these uh, uh, these issues. Uh, 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 today. So what is the future of dairy? Uh, in the coming years, there will be larger dairy farm operations, uh, narrower profit margins, and increase uh, increased feed uh, uh, and energy labor cost. Cow managed, sorry. Uh, so cow managed by fewer more technically skilled workers, so greater degree of automation. So with the uh, with the with the coming years, we will see uh, the larger dairy farms and uh, there is minimum labor in the farm and there is more aut automation. However, in India, the milk production is basically masses by production. 
it is not a mass production it is mass is by production and in the foreign countries you can see that it is a mass production that is they have a larger number of uh, animals and a few number of people are keeping uh, the eye on that farm and the milk production coming from there however in india the the the, the milk production is from mass is by production so in precision uh, dairy monitoring the the, the main uh, the four criteria are there you can uh, take uh, take the milk sorry so you can consider uh, the the maintaining the quality of the milk so you can just the quality of milk you can identify the behavior of the animals and you can identify the physiology or you can identify conformation conformation means uh, the body condition scoring so that we can identify the which animal are thin weak uh, so we can easily identify the animal conformation so uh, first of all I'll, i will talk about the developments so in 1970s the development of individual cow ids have begun and in 1980s the sensor for de disease detection uh, has been started and in 1990s there automatic milking is there and in 2000 there is revival of sensors and in 2010 there is new generation of sensor so basically the in, in coming years the more and more research has been done uh, in the field of the sensors so you have seen uh, like the people going for morning walk and wearing these uh, accelerometers. So basically, what is the difference between accelerometer and pedometer? If you know, pedometer basically count the number of steps, whereas accelerometer count the distance and with which speed you are moving. So this same mechanism has been uh, applied to the cow online sensors. So you can uh, see in the, this uh, diagram that uh, cows are also having the wearable technologies. So basically, humans are uh, getting advantage of wearable technology, and same has been applied to the uh, livestock mainly dairy farming so three different technologies are mainly can be classified uh, like wearables uh, which uh, animal will wear on the legs on the on the on the neck or by the images so you can use uh, telemetry telemetry is uh, uh, from the remote uh, area you are uh, judging the animal behavior through cameras you can say and through milk analysis so the three technologies uh, different area of technology can be divided into and then technologies used in precision farming uh, use mainly GIS, GPS, GIS you can say because they are both wireless sensor networks. Radio frequency identification devices are there, sensors, automated feeding system, image and video analysis and milk yield monitoring. So basically these are the technologies that are uh, being used in the precision livestock farming. So what are the goal of precision uh, dairy farming? It is uh, maximizing the animal performance, detect disease in individual cause, detect herd level health and uh, productivity problems, minimize the use of medication through preventing health measures. So what precision dairy farming is doing, it is basically uh, taking the work of the humans and assisting in decision making, which will help in increasing the production uh, and production efficiency of the animals and also help in minimize the medication and which will help in solving the problem of antibiotic resistance because consumers are, are now more concerned about the antibiotic resistance. So if the welfare of the animal in the farm is more uh, or improved, then obvious the animal will uh, get uh, less sick and the antibiotics, less antibiotic will be used in that farm and the uh, less antibiotic resistance we can get from the livestock byproducts or products. So basically there, these, these are the three pillars of precision livestock farming, uh, environmental sustainability, because we have to also consider the environment, less pollutants to, uh, are being uh, expelled from the dairy farming and there is social sustainability because uh, labor is uh, most of 33 percent of the cost of dairy farming is consumed by labor so we have to uh, reduce the labor cost in the dairy farming also the economic sustainability because we will in use the in inputs judicially in uh, livestock uh, precision farming so you can see in this picture that there is a comparison of the traditional and automatic monitoring farm and you can uh, easily uh, view easily that there is a, a less uh, uh, that uh, no, sorry less uh, emissions from that farm and also the there is improved health and welfare better productive and reproductive performance and less antibiotic heavy metal phosphorus and also reducing the workload of the farm so basically the in the future you will see uh, various uh, smart farms which are using precision uh, dairy farm technologies so this uh, this is the uh, diagram of a cow in which you can see that what the sensor will judge basically what the sensor will uh, will judge the uh, health parameter normal physiological parameter like respiration feed intake how much cow is feeding uh, chewing activity uh, rumination ph fat how much fat is in the body of the cow what the temperature of the cow what is the milk content of the cow is there mastitis mastitis mean uh, thanella in hindi it is an inflammation of udder may be caused by bacterial or environment factors hoof health limbness is there in cow 
lying how much uh, time the cow is lying and what is the position of cow so all these factor are be basically judged by the cow so you should also have a knowledge of uh, ethology which is called the animal behavior if you want to use the precision uh, livestock farming so application of the precision dairy farming it help helping judging the milk uh, recording systems it will help in milk component monitors activity monitor lying and domination behavior monitors milk conductivity indicators lameness detection covid detection mastitis detection fresh cow disease detection stress detection monitors management uh, monitoring so basically if you want to classify these all uh, application of precision dairy farming so it will help in uh, uh, helping basically judging the disease so it will help in uh, basically identifying the disease early so if the disease is identified early it can help in reducing the managemental problems also it will help in judging the normal behavior of the animal which will help in also uh, identify indirectly that health of the animal it will also help in the milk component analysis broadly it is uh, help in increasing the production and the production in the farm so we on uh, so one by one we'll discuss all these technologies application of this uh, precision dairy farming in identification we can see that identification technology is basically use rfid this is rfid radio frequency identification device so basically these are the tags that has been uh, tagged with the rfids so basically there is uh, some uh, you can say that antenna in the antenna will send the signals to these tags and this uh, the signal will then revert back to that monitor and that monitor is connected to cloud cloud mean the uh, the computer uh, program where you can judge that uh, what is the number of this cow so cow can be tracked uh, so why we, why there is a need of uh, cow tracking because we want to know about the record of that cow so previously the record has been uh, uh, write down in the manuals and uh, so but in coming years you will have the automation of the records also so all the records can be tracked by only this uh, this writing this number on the computer like 0002 is the name of that cow and we can track its past record whole recording so radio frequency identification device basically help in identification and basically help in identify each animal differently so now i am coming to online animal sensors so there are number of uh, online animal sensors that you can see that in the human beings like in the human beings animal also have online sensors so for the online sensors it can be on the foot of the animal it can be on the neck of the animal it can be on the tail of the animal so basically it help in judging the normal behavior of the animal like in the foot sensor can help in detection that how many steps are being taken by the animal and the neck sensor can help in uh, the uh, temperature recording of that cow the rumination of that cow feed intake of that cow for how much time that cow is fed so all these physiological parameters has been taken by that uh, these uh, sensors. Then uh, these are different locations on which we can uh, fit the sensors: ears, leg, neck, tail, and reticulo or rumen. In rumen also, which is a uh, like we have stomach in animals, we have rumen. In rumen, we we'll have we have these all location have some disadvantages and advantages of uh, different. Uh, you can see over there. I am not going into much detail of it. So this is a system how the uh, the component of on animal sensor work so this is basically uh, the, the this is a online animal sensor so basically this send data to the antenna which is data communication then this is cloud service where the data is analyzed and on that basis it will send alert on the mobiles to the farmer so this farmer can uh, judge at any time and will get uh, alert messages on his mobile that at what time his cow is having less rumination less rumination uh, directly corresponds to less feed intake and less feed intake directly correspond to poor health of that animal so it, we will it will help the farmer in judging the disease and early diagnosis of disease so it will help is uh, saving the, uh, the 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 uh, the money that will uh, put a, uh, put a, uh, uh, he will put in the treatment of that cow and also the cow will get early diagnosed and it will be uh, more healthy so uh, now the cow activity monitors so these, these are the cow activity monitors on the leg so this uh, will uh, directly correspond on the computer computer like these graphs we can see and at which time the rumination is low when the cow is sick the rumination will be low at which time the feed intake so this this is the uh, the the basically software which which you can uh, try on your computers and uh, you, i want also want to inform all the participants that in our dairy farm also we have recently uh, installed this kind of system and it will help in uh, it is helping us in uh, early uh, ester detection so ester detection you already know that ester detection is basically a heat in the cow in which the cow is telling us that it is a time of artificial insemination so it is very much important for to 
identify the heat in the cow because previously in our farm if i take an example that in the cows we will identify the heat in the cow through the only the visual observation and uh, through visual observation in 21 days you, you i want to share that in 21 days only the cow is in heat in one to two days so to identify cow in heat in 21 days for one to two days uh, that it is very much difficult through visual observation so basically but these uh, these uh, pedometers you can say or accelerometers are inserted in this online sensors so what they are doing basically they are counting the cow steps so in estrus what happened that the cow takes more step it start more walking so so from more walking there is a more uh, more walking activity in the cow so this send the alerts to the farmer so indirectly a farmer can identify the cow that which cow is in estrus and it is very much important for for a farmer to identify the which cow is an estrus because if you miss one estrus it next since estrus will come after 21 days and if it come after 21 days you will lacking the 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 date of insemination so it will also increase the feeding time that will feed the cow in the dry period uh, time so uh, if you miss one hit i want to tell you that you will the farmer is having a loss of four to five thousand rupees okay so if it's too heat then it is about approximately 10000 rupees so it is very much important to for estrus detection and uh, this is the most important uh, important application of precision dairy farming okay so activity antenna and computer so these are the, also the uh, the different type this is antenna i was talking about it will send the signals to this tag and the tag will revert by signals and the signals will send the the signals to the online online uh, cloud services and this is a software from which you can interpret that how much time the cow is walking how much time the cow is feeding is there any health problem so these all can be tracked on this through, through this software so these are human policies. So this is inserted in the human of the cow. These are policies. It will help in the, the knowing the normal rumination is there is not. Because if the cow is ill, then it will also affect the rumination. So these are the permanent uh, inserted in the human of the cow. And it will help in also knowing the human temperature. And also that there is a normal uh, rumination in the cow is not. Because if like in acidosis, acidosis is a very big problem in the dairy farms. Because if more concentrate is been taken by the dairy animal, it can lead to the uh, SARA, that is severe acute uh, rumen acidosis. So it can be judged by these sensors and uh, these can send alerts to the farmers for early diagnosis. So these are Rumi watch, same how much uh, rumination is taken by, how much uh, time the cow is chewing. So all this study can help in early diagnosis of disease or any problem in the dairy animals. So these are also leg and uh, neck mounted accelerometers. So accelerometer also for use in the Easter detection, as you already know. Now we'll talk about the mastitis. Mastitis is the most common economic problem in the dairy farms. After that, uh, you can say reproductive disorder and then limbness. So these three are most important uh, economic problems in all the dairy farms in the world. Mastitis means inflammation in the udder. The second uh, biggest economical problem is the reproductive problems and third is limbness. So all these three pro problems are the economical problems all over the world in the larger dairy farms, also in the smaller dairy farms of the India, you can also say. But mastitis is the biggest problem, economic problem in the dairy farms. So how the these sensors are uh, basically helping uh, resolving this mastitis is that there is an online uh, in on in one somatic uh, cell counter is there so basically what happened in mastitis the somatic cell count in the milk start increasing okay so so, so somatic cell count uh, the has been uh, analyzed by these machines and this will help in uh, early detection of the mastitis also there is uh, soma detect it is a form of uh, these uh, somatic cell count detectors so this is normally inserted in the uh, milking parlor okay so milk uh, in robotic milky part whenever, whenever, the, whenever the milk has been taken from the cow the milk will come in these pipelines and this pipeline have been fitted with the sensors and th this will help in detection of the somatic cell count is there how much it has been increased and if it is more than two lakh uh, the somatic cell increase then it can it uh, it, it is uh, pointing toward the mastitis so we'll have early mastitis detection so now limbness uh, in limbness, uh, I have already told you, this is the third most economic problem uh, in the uh, livestock dairy farming. So these, there are the 3D sensors for limbness detection, like these cameras are inserted 2D sensors, uh, 2D overhead sensors. So cow walk through these uh, platform and the, 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 
how the cow walks through this uh, the platform is easily just by sensor and cow uh, or you can also use the thermography uh, so wherever thermography is used the more uh, like you can see in these lags so more red areas conforming to the uh, the limbness in the animal limbness so limbness can is easily be detected by these 3d sensors now is detection so these are this is the diagram in which uh, I have already discussed in detail that cow bearing sensors. This is an accelerometer and pedometer is inserted in the on the neck of the cow and it will help in the walking activity, which is directly help in judging the stress in the cow. The radio telemetry can also be used in stress detection. Like if the animal mount the the sensor has been kept on the tail of the cow. When other cow mounting, mounting is a normal behavior in the stress of animal, which will help in stress detection. So when the cow mount over the other cow, the, it will send the signals to the base station and it can also send adults uh, alerts accordingly. We can uh, see that which uh, cow is in the hit. So in calving, calving is also very much important because calving losses will result in the losses of the future generation. So calving losses, there is a different calving detection techniques in the farms from which will send alerts to the uh, farmer that your cow is going to calve and uh, accordingly the, uh, the farmer can take the managemental decisions uh, about the calving of that cow. So here you can see that uh, the, the this cow is in calving position. The, uh, this cow is uh, now uh, will soon give a deliver a calf. So the position of cow is changing. So camera is basically judging the position of the cow and sending the alert to the farmer. So through the camera you can also uh, judge the calving the uh, calving the cow. So now the health parameters. Uh, uh, let's move to health parameters. So this is an enhanced animal behavior analysis. So animal behavior obvious. Uh, it's obvious that whenever the animal is ill. Uh, is suffering from some disease, its behavior got altered. So first of all, this behavior got altered. So if the sensors are identified, are used, can identify this behavior uh, patterns in the animal, uh, we can uh, obviously identify the diseased animal in our farm. So physiological man uh, monitoring is there. We can easily identify this. This can put on the ear sensor, which can help in taking the respiration rate, which can also help in the taking the temperature of that uh, animal. Leg sensor also there. So physiologic monitor like respiration temperature can also be taken by these uh, sensors. So automatic injection in the health. So uh, the automatic injection you can see in the picture that this cow has been given with a with a ro robot injection is given to that animal. Okay. So robotic injections are is also prevalent in these uh, larger farms. The sleep monitoring system is also very much important. You would be aware that cow also sleep like you sleep. And the good amount of sleep and position of sleep also with just the health and welfare of that animal. So this uh, how this is how cow sleep and sleep monitoring system will help in use the accelerometer and we can just the better with sleeping time in the cow. Because rest quality of the cow is very much important. The more the cow the rest, uh, like uh, you would, uh, I want to uh, inform all the audience that cow rest almost uh, 12 to 14 hours. So 12, 12 to 14 hours is the lying time in the cow. The more the cow, the rest, the more milk she will give. Okay. Next is thermal imaging for calf health. Calf is very much important because the calf is the future. Uh, in the future, it will become a cow. It is very much important because in some diseases like pneumonia and bovine respiratory disease, there is inflammation in the respiratory tract of the cow. So in the thermograph, you can see this is thermography is installed in this barrier and a thermography image of this uh, respiration, uh, respiratory system is taken and we can see red areas. So this one, I can identify early respiratory disease in this animal. So now um, some managemental practices that uh, are using body uh, precision dairy farming is body condition scoring. So body condition scoring is basically you want to identify which animal are thin, thick or inter CS body condition score is from 0 to 5. So we should have ideal body condition score of an animal between 2.5 to 3. So through these calculated angles through cameras, uh, you can identify what is a what is a what is the body condition scoring of that animal. So in BCS automation, this is the same in which you can see that we can easily identify the body condition of the animal and it will help us uh, to make some nutritional intervention in our dairy farm. Then this is 3D vision of automatic measurement. The same you can see uh, from the cameras, you can see that the, how the body condition score of the animal is being judged by the, only the cameras. Pre previously, the body condition scoring is judged by the by the farmers uh, through visual observation, basically. But now the 3D cameras are used for the body condition scoring of animals and judging their nutritional status accordingly. 
Now weight monitoring, it is also very much important because according to the weight, you will feed the animal. So weight monitoring is also very much important. So these are now the uh, the, the automatic walkthrough weight monitoring system in which the animal walk. It can be installed outside the milking parlor where the cow milk. Uh, so cow will come regularly to this uh, walkthrough uh, weight monitoring system. And we can easily judge what is the weight of animal because weight fluctuation in the animal uh, is, uh, is pointing the fingers towards uh, the poor health of the animal and poor feeding in that farm so automatically we, it, it can also help in judging that how much weight in this different limbs of the animal is uh, being uh, being uh, carried by the animal uh, so the, it will it can also help in identifying the early lameness in the animal okay so now i will talk about the acoustic sensors so this will take uh, i haven't put any slide but in acoustic sensors what the thing is that uh, the, it will it will used like a microphone is being inserted on the neck of the animal and uh, when the microphone is inserted the say uh, the few uh, sounds of the animal can be recorded and like in case of respiratory diseases the animal will uh, produce some different sounds so basically what the acoustic sensor will judge it will uh, help in uh, judging the different uh, sounds of animal that it will produce and also because in uh, like uh, pneumonia, the animal will produce the different uh, sound. So these sounds will be judged by the sensors and the sensor will send the alerts to the farmer that your animal uh, might be suffering from uh, different diseases. So now I will talk about the, the automatic milking system. This is a robotic milking system. So what is happening in India is normally that the cow is being milked by the farmers and uh, farmers and uh, the milking machines, but it required the, the worker to be there. Okay, to operate the system. But nowadays, uh, in, in foreign countries, there is robotic milking and there is no need of a labor. These are uh, arm robots. It will uh, The cow will enter this platform and these arm robots will automatically uh, put uh, these uh, uh, teat cups uh, on the animals and it will automatically milk the cow. So there is no need of a labor for this robotic milking. So this is a diagram again for representation of the, the, the automatic milking system in which the, the cow will go to the platform, the milk meter, it will analyze all the milk composition that I was talking previously that the milk composition through inline animal, uh, the inline sensors, okay. So this will uh, also send the data processing and animal, the, all the decisions can be taken accordingly if there is a change in the milk uh, composition or how much milk is being produced by a particular animal. Because if there is fluctuation in the milk production, it uh, it it will we can identify the disease time in our day farm. So milk composition, I have talked in detail. This is machine learning milk sample and Fourier uh, transform infrared. So, so it will help in uh, judging various milk components. Uh, so if a variation in milk components, it will again send the alert to the farmers to FTR, uh, Fourier transform uh, infrared uh, spectrophotometry, basically. So it is a spectrophotometry, uh, spectrophotometry which help in uh, judging the all the milk constituents. So if there is a change in the milk constituents, uh, it will help in early diagnosis of mastitis uh, and whatever disease you found. Because basically what happened, when the animal becomes diseased, uh, uh, when you can see through your eyes that animal is diseased, the, all the, the milk changes has been uh, taken place nine days before also, nine to 10 days before only, when you will see uh, the animal through eyes that it will become diseased, the milk changes has been started uh, gradually differentiating uh, nine to 10 days before. So it will help in early diagnosis of disease again. Most important is mastitis. So automatic feeding systems, uh, it will also help in reducing the labor in the farms. Uh, farms. This is the near infrared uh, technology you can use. It will also help in judging the all the feed constituents. You can judge how much trimeter is present in the feed, how much protein, carbohydrates. So accordingly, uh, to particular animal, it will read the tag and what is, what is the uh, normal requirement of that animal. Accordingly, the feed will be given to that animal. And you can also judge in that the composition of feed also can be noted down in the monitors. So this is a feed management software, the, the previous slide and we have talked in detail. In silage inventory with the drone. So in this basically silage is used by the by the dairy farmers when there is a uh, non-availability of the green fodder. So basically this is a preserved green fodder. So basically the quality of silage can be judged through drones. So drone is uh, basically judging the quality of uh, silage. We can also judge that in this silo pit how much silage is being stored and which is uh, spoiled silage. So basically it is also using the, uh, the infrared uh, spectrophotometry. 
so automatic it became our total mixed ration so basically in this uh, uh, what we are doing what we the farmer is doing basically uh, he is feeding uh, the concentrates and roughages separately so it need to be fed with uh, together roughage and concentrate need to be fed together so that it will help in stabilizing the rumen ph also help in incre increasing the animal production so automatic tmr machines are there which will uh, help in uh, mixing the concentrate and roughage and accordingly how much uh, the the requirement of animal as per his tag is given by this uh, automatic feeder so it will help in uh, reducing drastically the labor inputs that you are giving in your farm and also you want to know it is important to know that feeding cost is almost 60 to 70% of total milk production for example if we are having uh, the 100 rupees cost for milk production 70 rupees is been taken by the feeding and uh, and um, and 20 to 30% is been taken by labor so feeding is a very much important and precise if we do the precise feeding then the production of animal will be increased and also the environmental implications from the greenhouse gases will be minimum. Now heat stress, uh, in the coming years, the heat stress is the major problem in all the farm. So uh, the, in, the these are the sensors which can control the, that uh, when the curtains need to be raised and when the curtain needs to be uh, pulled up. So accordingly, it will uh, adjust the curtains, adjust the wind speed, rainfall. So uh, the sensors can judge the what is the temperature and what, what is the humidity in that farm. Because the temperature and humidity is very much important for the optimum performance of animals. If you're not giving the animal uh, the optimum micro environment the animal will perform poor and there is no use of whatever you are feeding it is of least important but uh, also giving the proper micro environment to the animal is most important and sensors will help in judging the the, the suitable environmental condition to the animal so this is stress heat management you can see here in the diagram that this uh, this sensor will uh, judge uh, that animal is coming and when the animal is coming and there is a heat stress on the animal through uh, judging the thi 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 it takes into account into temperature and humidity condition of that farm when thi is greater than 72 it will uh, automatically uh, sprinkle the water on the these and dairy animals and it will help in relieving the stress uh, in the dairy animals because you you should know that uh, the more heat the heat stress in the animal the less will be milk production and uh, also it is very much important that after 25 degrees celsius uh, the environmental temperature the cow is feeling the stress and its milk production started decreasing with the advance in the uh, temperature so these are also record, vocal recording devices, these acoustic sensors that I was missing in the previous slide. So these are acoustic sensors, which can uh, hurt the, uh, the, these contain the microphones from which the sounds of the cow can be just, and we can identify various kinds of diseases in these animals. So now in extensive dairy production, the in the previous slides, we've all discussed about the intensive dairy farms in which animals are kept in the place in the confined factory style production system. But in few countries like New Zealand and Australia, the animals are also, also kept in the pasture. So what the, the technologies are used, uh, personal dairy farming is being used in the extensive dairy production, like optimizing gra grazing utilization. So uh, through personal dairy farming, you can judge the soil health, you can judge from a dry matter intake, uh, how much dry matter is present you know, biomass production is there. So accordingly, you can graze the animal. Uh, this is virtual fence fencing. You can uh, also, uh, this is a uh, application of precision dairy farming. So what happened in virtual uh, uh, fencing? It will help in uh, obvious uh, grazing management of animal on which uh, grazing land we want to graze the animal, but we don't want the animals to graze on the other piece of land. So what the virtual fencing is doing basically, in the neck collar of this animal, uh, there are some sensors are fitting. And these sensors are basically connect to the cloud surface. Like if I virtually draw the fence on the laptop that uh, in this fence, I want to uh, the graze the animals. So I will draw this fence and this fence will be taken by the GPS and automatically whenever the cow go away from this line, the 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 the, the color of the cow that is having some sensors which will send the 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 noises noises to the cow it will start increasing so as the cow approaches toward that uh, fencing line the sound signal starts to increase and also it can give the electric shock to the animal so basically the animal become trained that uh, this is the line virtual line so basically this is not a fence line this is a virtual line uh, through uh, so that animal get trained and they will not uh, go uh, beyond this fence so virtual fencing is very much important through the proper gra grazing management exercise day farms so uh, you 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 till now you know that their options are endless there are basically a number of sensors there are basically cameras and these all sensor we have discussed in details 
but uh, in, this is this is the enough this is a present dairy farming technology that is being used in india so in our basically information network for animal productivity health this is being uh, this is being uh, developed by the nddb national dairy development board so this is the 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 framework of enough what basically doing uh, with this is the online services where uh, they are basically tracking the small dairy farmers like small holder dairy farmers so when how much they are feeding to the animal when uh, they will uh, they will do the ai in that animal so what are the veterinary services they are getting and uh, uh, their milk testing also there so basically these technology are being used in india also it is not that it is not being used in india also so what are potential benefit uh, this will help in increasing efficiency better environmental performance because there is less greenhouse gas emissions reduced cost optimizing production uh, decreased labor reduced culls culling basically removing the animal from the herd uh, the uh, better health better reproduction quality control because if the animal is in uh, good welfare and good health obvious the the, the product that is by being we harvest from that animal is also uh, having good quality uh, the intermediate focus on single animal health and welfare condition because in larger farm it is very much difficult to uh, observe all the cows their health their feeding so basically individual animal approach is being taken by this precision dairy farming so elevation of food security challenges generation evidence of food safety traceability effect on economic sustainability and improving work conditions so uh, main issues affecting the adoption of pdf is herd size because uh, the herd size is more then only the pd uh, the pdf that is precision dairy farming is more uh, economical then economy of a scale a farm characteristic accuracy is very very much important because sometimes it can lead to false results then prevalence of the factor that affect the value of net avoided cost with respect to the achieved uh, information so what are the disadvantages the biggest challenge is data management because uh, the in precision dairy farming you will have uh, a, a ma major uh, data and biggest challenge to, for data management and you should know that how to interpret that data because basically uh, what the pdf is doing precision dairy farming is doing that it is giving you data but interpreter is only you so you have to interpret it it is only helping decision making uh, for the management of decision the amount of data collected by the can be overwhelming difficult to understand uh, the initial investment as we know already it is very much need of expert because we have to interpret data high maintenance cost and subsidy is also not uh, provided, provided by the government so economic consideration we need to do investment analysis before any uh, uh, installing any input in our dairy farms uh, of the pdf uh, not one size fits to all obvious because uh, all the these uh, technologies do not, do not fit to all the farms economical benefits for different areas need to be looked quickest for heat detection i have already discussed for the production parameter it is very much important these technologies and we have in, the, in our dairy farm we also in, installed this uh, technology okay a system that measure multiple parameter make most sense so basically, uh, what precision technologies uh, can and cannot do, this cannot make decision like experienced dairy farmer. So this is only providing uh, you the information from which you have to take the decision. So you are the decision maker. It won't take any decision. You are just uh, taking the decision. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, thank you, Dr. Rankaj Thakur. We, it was indeed a very wonderful and a dynamic presentation, sir. For you have enlightened us a lot about uh, the unique concept of precision dairy farming, which was quite unique for us and it was very beautifully presented. You have briefly told us about all the pros and cons and the technologies related to the precision dairy farming so that we can adopt in our daily lives and uh, make living a better place. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Now the session is open for discussion. I request all the participants to post up your questions in the chat box. Dear participants, please post your questions in the chat box. So there's one question from Suman. The question is, by fixing sensors to animals, any ill effect to animals? See, till date, uh, the technology is being used uh, not that much extensively and research is going being more focused toward enhancing and reaping the benefits of these technologies. In future, the, the ill benefits, uh, the research area might be uh, need to be researched. So till now, there is not much uh, uh, study has been done on the ill effects because the, the people are now and scientists are more focusing toward reaping the benefits from this technology. Any other questions, participants, please post up your questions in the chat box. 
Um, I think they they have no more question because they have understood all this and all this lecture. I think so. Dr. Rajan, there are no more questions. Shall we wind up? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for sharing. Yeah, sir, sir. One, question, one question is there. One question from Ankita Tiwari. Yeah. You mentioned climate smart dairy farming. Can you elaborate about it, please? Okay. So basically, climate, climate uh, smart dairy farming is basically, uh, you all know that uh, livestock is contributing towards the greenhouse gases like nitrous oxide, methane is there, okay? So this, uh, through the, through the you can see methane, also through the, the respiration, they are giving, uh, the emitting the greenhouse gases. So these greenhouse gases uh, is contributing to the global warming, in, uh, in a global warming and it is the uh, important topic for the future. So uh, the global warming, uh, the, the people uh, and uh, people around the globe is wanting that it's a global emission from from that. So basically, uh, the, the we are more focused on the climate smart uh, technologies, which are uh, emitting less greenhouse gases. Okay. So the next question is: What is the adoption rate of these technologies you mentioned by the dairy farmers? See, basically in India is in uh, this uh, PDF that it, this is dairy farming is very in nascent stage. Not all the farms are uh, are taking the the these all technologies. The most uh, important technology that is being adopted is for the stress detection, that is heat detection in animal. So this technology is being adopted. Like I have mentioned that in our dairy farm, there is also we have recently uh, installed this uh, heat detection system. It costs more two to one lakh. So this system uh, is basically costly, but uh, but if you see the economical evolution of this system, like I say that if you, if you miss uh, one heat in the cow, it will cost a farmer around four to five thousand. So if you farm bigger farm and you have two hundred cows and you are missing the heat in twenty cows, so it will cost uh, very much. Okay, so you have to see the future implication and economic consideration. So whatever technology you are adopting, and in Maharashtra there are number of farm in Nagpur there are number of farms that are, that are adopting these kind of technologies. Sir, is it safe to insert rumen bolus? Yes, yes, the... Definitely it is insert because it is an inert to any enzymes over there. And basically what these rumen boluses are doing, they are uh, basically identifying what is the temperature that was going there and their proper rumination is going over there or not. Basically any disease is there, uh, it will affect the rumen activity. So they basically they are safe. So what is the future of livestock in Indi Indian economy? So the future of livestock, basically, uh, the livestock, uh, you know, uh, livestock is contributing around four percent to GDP, and agriculture is contributing around sixteen percent. Uh, so this four percent is being uh, now increased. Uh, you can see twenty nine percent. It is uh, if you want to say that hundred rupees is being given by agriculture. Out of the hundred rupees in contra thirty rupees is contributed the by the by the livestock okay mm -hmm. so livestock contribution is going uh going uh great uh, increasing and also if you see the growth rate in the agriculture it is two percent and in the in the in the livestock sector is four to five percent and even up to seven percent in poultry sector you can see so in the in the global demand of animal protein, uh, protein is uh, increasing in the coming future and uh, basically the livestock is the source of animal protein uh, so in the coming years there is an increasing livestock uh, increase the population human population is there so there is a need uh, of animal protein and also this is not that human population will increase number second their uh, uh, their purchasing power will also increase and if the purchasing power increases the byproduct they will also consume like cheese curd uh, whatever it is byproduct uh, you get from the milk so they will also consume more uh, more uh, milk byproducts because their consumer power is increasing so population and the increasing the consumer uh, power is basically uh, focusing towards the the demand driven growth in the livestock Okay, so the next question is by Ranjit Dhawan. As you explain some of the sensors, is it possible to apply this in India as livestock holding is reducing? Yeah, it, it is very much a good question because I want to also focus on this question. Because in India, you will see there are small uh, dairy farms, like uh, small uh, livestock holding only two to three farms. But uh, you see in your village uh, that uh, that people are leaving, uh, leaving uh, are not keeping these animals. So from where the milk will come to these uh, people? 
obvious the the larger dairy farms will uh, come in the future and because larger dairy fa farm is have more production efficiency more efficiency as comparison to the smaller farm so in future uh, there is a the more scope that you, are, you can see like in punjab and haryana uh, there are more uh, larger commercial dairy farm okay they are adopting the technologies and uh, they are fighting uh, neck to neck with the technology that is given by the other global dairy farms so basically in the coming future there is a more uh, larger dairy farms and if more larger dairy farms this is crumbles some to uh, uh, to observe each individual animal and obvious uh, the present dairy farming uh, is the future of all these uh, larger dairy farms. Sir, how livestock aligns with precision farming? See, precision farming, basically, you uh, you say that precision farming is using the technologies, okay? So, uh, in the farm, uh, you have to take many managemental decisions, which uh, includes your labor, you use feeding, it's in different managemental procedures. But in the farm, you can't observe uh, each individual animal, okay? Like if a farm of 500 animals, you can't uh, see uh, each individual, individual animal. If you, if you want to identify that among 500 animals, which animal is ill, it is very much difficult. So through pre precision farming, uh, like uh, uh, putting sensors on the animal through thermal imaging, through milk component analysis, we can identify which animal is ill. So the, we can identify it, it, it helping basically early diagnosis of the disease. So it is contributing uh, the better health and better welfare in the larger farms. Any other questions, participants? Sir, I think we have answered all the questions of the chat box. Please light on community farming in livestock is the next question. Community farming basically, uh, uh, it is not my today's topic, but I want to, um, you have asked that community farming. In community farm, the, the, it is like a FPO. FPO, uh, you, 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 know, you know, FPO is there that uh, uh, the farmer producer unions are coming over there and they are collaborating like cooperatives. So in cooperative, uh, the farmers are the owner of that organization. Like in a village of 100 uh, farmers, few farmers come together and they share the benefit. So community farming is also very much important. And you see the milk revolution is due to the community of farming. Thank you, sir. By this, we hope so. We have ended all the answered all the queries of the chat box. So you are getting a lot many of messages that you have presented it very well. Thank you all for listening to my presentation. Congratulations on that, sir. And uh, thank you, sir. On behalf of the team, Sahas, I extend my heartful thanks uh, for sparing your valuable time and let, uh, letting us know a lot about dairy precision farming, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. It was a new concept to us. So thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dear participants, we are towards the end of our training session. Tomorrow we'll have one more training session. Perhaps that will be the last day of uh, our program. So I request all the participants to take part in our uh, future training program and make best utilization of it and present yourself the most. So. Tomorrow, we'll be giving up a feedback form, which uh, after only which you'll be getting up the certificates. So I request all the participants to be present tomorrow as soon as possible and uh, make the um, best worth of it. So this is all about today's session. Thank you very much to all the participants for your kind cooperation. On behalf of the team, Sahas, also I extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Dr. Rajan, any any? No, thank you. Close our to in today's session. Okay. So this winds up today's session. Thank you, one and all. Okay.